Hey guys, welcome to our review of the Cashua Air Seconds Fresh and Black Trailer Tent 4.2. Quite a mouthful to describe the Catalan's first trailer tent. They lent us this pre-production model of test out, so it's not the final version, but judging from the attention to detail, we can't really imagine it being very far from a final product. We don't get to keep it and we are not paid for our opinion, so as always, you can trust us to not try and sell you anything. So first question, what is this really? Because at first I had kind of a hard time figuring out what to compare this to. Trailer tents are a very broad category, some of them very close to caravans with batteries, heating, a kitchen and, and a price to match. Others are really just conveniently packaged tents with a couple of extras. And the Air Seconds Fresh and Black 4.2, once you wrap your head around it, falls mostly in that second category. The best way to think of this is as a high-end Keshua tent with a couple of extras that just happens to be a little overweight on wheels. So is it just a tent with a license plate then? Well, yes, but with that weight come a couple of distinct advantages that if you have room for it, make this quite an alluring alternative to a standard camping tent. The main attractions here, as far as I'm concerned, are the size, the storage, and the bedroom experience. If you've never set up a trailer tent before, it's probably safe to make sure that you have plenty of time when setting up the first time, because there definitely is a learning curve here. And you may, for example, find yourself starting to unpack the tent before properly stabilizing the trailer, as we did. beams are inflatable, so that's easy, but there are four of them, as well as a lengthwise beam, so it does take some time. I'd say that with some practice, you can get your setup time down to about 20 to 25 minutes. It's not impossible to do it alone, but it's definitely easier with two people, and the same is true for breaking up. The instructions are generally pretty clear, but there is some amount of guesswork involved, particularly when folding everything up, where it isn't always clear what goes on top of what. All in all, setting up and breaking down is well thought out, it's not overly complicated, and you don't have to get it 100% right just to be able to close the trailer, which is definitely a big plus. But it's certainly more work than your standard four-person tent. If you do mostly very short trips, that might bother you. For longer stays, longer holidays, I don't think it will be an issue. To get an idea of the size of this tent, let's compare it to the Air Seconds 6.3 Polycotton. This is Keshua's current flagship model, a four to six person tent that measures 6.3 meters by three meters. It's nice and roomy for four people, even in rainy weather. And there's even room for an extra insert that sleeps two extra people and still leaves you with a nice living area. But the Keshua trailer tent is significantly larger. The length is about the same, but the trailer tent is not only a good deal wider, it also has two fairly large vestibules complete with a curtain. Now, I don't know what exactly the designers expect you to use these for, but in the four trips I did with a trailer tent, they turned out to be pretty versatile. We used them as a kitchen, as a changing room, and as a place to stash all our junk out of sight. I'm also wondering whether perhaps these vestibules could be used in the future as a connection to an additional sleeping area module. You see these on some higher end tents as a way to customize your living and sleeping space based on the group you're traveling with. I, I like to see it here. Now that would be Keshua's first foray into more modular designs, and I think that would be a good thing, since they're sometimes considered to be cheap and not very durable brand. And I think some of their higher end offerings like this one and the uh, recent poly cotton tents have the potential to last you a very long time. And it would be nice if they had the potential to grow with you and with your family as your needs change through the years. Oh, and one last thing about the vestibules, as versatile as they are, they are not really cut out to be doors because of the way that the zippers are laid out. There's no convenient way to open them or none that we, none that we found. And at first I was kind of bummed out by this since I'm used to using the side door in our poly cotton tent so we don't have to open the front all the time. But then I realized that the front of this tent has a magnetic opening that I am really, really a fan of. It doesn't always close behind you very neatly because there's always gonna be some tension on the walls of a well-pitched tent, but I still think this is a lovely improvement. 
because one of the things that are very important to me in any tent that sleeps more than one person is how easy it is to get up in the morning or in the middle of the night without waking other people up. And this trailer tent mostly excels at that and the magnets certainly play a big role in that. Then the styling. Some of the design elements here will be familiar to anyone who's spent some time in a top of the line Keshua tents recently, but it does stand out if only by its colors. Keshua tents have had a number of recognizable colorways through the years, and this one is a bit of a departure. The FMB on the side of the trailer stands for fresh and black, which means that they've done their best to make sure that the bedrooms stay dark, in very bright conditions, and to keep the heat out. Hence the white exterior and the silver panels. Now, I've not completely made up my mind about the colors. On one hand, I like them very modern and smart and clean. On the other, for a family vacation, I do like a tent to feel cozy and warm with a bit of a glamping vibe. And this isn't really what you get here. My friend Steve called it space station styling because of the silver panels, and I do think that he's onto something. It looks nice and clean, and I still think you can turn this into a glamping tent if you want to, but it might require a bit more work. The side windows are a combination of translucent plastic and mosquito net, providing ample ventilation options. You can roll them down pretty low, giving you a bit of a gazebo tent feel with lots of light and air. One thing that I do hope that they add in the final version is a soft, insulating, nice looking mat for the living area since the white ground cloth is hard to keep clean. And I think that will also go a long way uh, toward giving you a warm and inviting look. The build on this tent feels very solid with a lot of thicker quality materials. You kind of get the sense that because it's a trailer tent, weight was not an issue when designing the tent. And this is one of the areas where you reap the benefits. The part of the tent that connects to the back end of the trailer has the thinnest materials, probably because of the way that it has to fold on top of everything else when it's put back into the trailer and you have to Velcro everything together when setting up. That does work well enough, but if any part of this tent feels like maybe it's not gonna hold up in the very long term, uh, this would be it. In terms of wind protection, I don't think there's much to worry about. Lots of guidelines and also, of course, just a very heavy, sturdy uh, tent in general. Okay, before we talk about perhaps my favorite thing about this tent, let's get some potential downsides out of the way. This is a pre-production model, so some of these might get ironed out. I'll try to clear that out in the comments. The metal step that folds out to give access to the bedrooms is very, very uncomfortable. Also, I'm happy that they included a mat between the two sleeping compartments, but I think this one is probably a bit flimsy to hold up very long. Number two, bugs. I can't honestly say that we had any real trouble with this ourselves, but I do think this design is inherently less bug-proof than most traditional tents where the sleeping area is completely enclosed in mesh. Here you get beds that are not bug sealed on the bottom and curtains that are draped over the side of the bed instead of zippers. Again, we did not have any issues with insects ourselves, but it might be useful to know if you're heading for a particularly buggy spot. Leveling the trailer is a necessary first step to setting up and it takes some practice. They do include a magnetic spirit level in the tent's accessories, which is nice, but the range of the extendable legs feels a bit limited and we had to improvise even on this not very irregular campground. This is obviously a large tent. It will mostly be used on campgrounds that have larger pitches and are easy to reach by car. But what happens when it rains on the last day of your stay? This happened to us uh, on one of our trips and it dawned on me that I did not have any way to really let it dry since the path that leads to my garden is not wide enough for a trailer. So I had to ask a friend if I could set up on his lawn for a day to let everything dry out. Not a deal breaker, but a bit of a nuisance uh, either way. Lastly, this is in many ways a more complex product than a regular tent. And as a result, there is just substantially more room for user error. You know how with a regular tent, you sometimes have to move a pole a little to the side to get the wrinkles out of the floor cloth? With a trailer tent like this, that is harder to do because there are different levels and everything is linked to a solid object that doesn't move at all, but does have fairly sharp corners. So following the instructions and taking some time to learn how everything aligns and works together is definitely a must here, more so than with regular family tents. 
but then storage. Storage is what I love most about this tent and also what I kind of hate about it. Well, I hate that I can't store it. I just don't have room in or around my house for a trailer this size. It has quite a bit of storage underneath and in between the beds. There are eight boxes that you can fill with a fair bit of camping gear as well as enough room for furniture. You could put a table in here, some chairs, a fold-up kitchen, in short, a full camping setup. I have this kind of crazy dream of having all my camping and hiking stuff organized in such a way that I could just add something to eat and drink and be off. And this storage space back here really scratches that itch for me because I can totally see myself packing furniture and cooking stuff and blankets in there and have everything just ready to go. Now, if you should have the same dream, if you have the same itch to scratch, do keep in mind that while there is a lot of space back there, um, you can open the back of the trailer um, and reach in, but you can't reach very far when it's all packed. So it's important if you put stuff in there, um, don't put anything in the back that you're gonna need outside of camping. When everything's unfolded, there are four large storage bags under the living room side of the beds. And if you've ever been in a family tent surrounded by stuff and semi-unpacked luggage because there was just not enough storage space to actually put anything, you are gonna love the size of these. And if you have kids' bikes or other outdoor stuff to store, the space under the beds can also double as a kind of garage. Like I said, storage is where this tent shines. The bedroom experience, maybe that should have been the title to this video. That would have gotten way more clicks. You were here though, so whatever I called it was good enough to get the attention of the more distinguished people of YouTube, but I'm still gonna tell you about the bedroom experience because I really like it. I don't know why sleeping a meter off of the ground feels so much better to me than sleeping on the ground, but it does. You're sleeping on about 12 centimeters of foam and you can either close everything off so you get two separate bedrooms or you can choose to have one big bedroom with a kind of corridor in the middle. Quite nice for younger families and I did notice that my kids use these more often as a place to huddle up with a book than they do in a standard family tent. The mattresses are pretty good. Six out of seven people who slept on them as a part of our test liked them. The one person who didn't like them felt uh, they were a bit too soft. As far as I know, they are not easily uh, user replaced. While most tents have the bedroom door on the short side of the beds, these are on the long side. And that may mean that you'll have to climb over the person in the middle if you wake up at night. There's no zipper though, so unless you step on them, you may not have to wake them up. In conclusion, since this is a pre-production model, I actually don't know what Decathlon is gonna charge for this, and so I can't review value for money. But assuming that the price is reasonable, I think this is gonna to appeal to a lot of people, especially those who prefer longer stays, because the longer you camp somewhere, the bigger the appeal of a large living space, good beds, and a lot of storage. I feel the technical insight, or at least the common sense to closely follow the instructions is probably an asset if you think about buying this trailer tent since there's a more uh, careful folding and tension management than you usually have with a four person tent. And of course, you have to own a trailer hitch and have to be comfortable driving with a trailer attached to your car. So what do you think? Is this gonna be a hit for Decathlon where we see these popping up everywhere across campings because everyone loves storage and comfy beds? Or is it just too big and too cumbersome? Let us know in the comments and thank you for watching.